Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MPWF Royal Rumble buy-in show. We are finally here. We are live on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. The Royal Rumble is shortly upon us. Folks, I'm your host as always, Dwayne James, Johnny Feelgood. And tonight, we're not only going to be previewing the Royal Rumble, but we're going to be giving you a little bit of action so you can get a taste of what one of the greatest cook reviews in MPWF history is about to be, folks. Once again, I'm Dwayne James, Johnny Fieldbid, and we are live from MetLife Stadium. And we get right into the action tonight, folks, as we begin things with the MPWF Women's Tag Team Championships. And right here, folks, we are on 2K24 for the first time. The buy-in show, it's been some time, but we are back and we are here live, folks. And introducing themselves here first is Cat Smalls and Brooklyn Von Braun making up the mothership. The team with the current FWF Undisputed Women's Champion Justice Fitzgerald. These two women earned their right to challenge for these tag team titles at the New Year's Revolution buy-in show. And here they are looking to become the Undisputed Women's Tag Team Champions. Yeah, you can see here from this crowd in MetLife Stadium, completely sold out, folks. Over 70 plus thousand people here for the Royal Rumble and for the buy-in show. It's a spectacular night, folks. And again, you know the butterflies is going to be coursing through every single superstar in the MPWF. We are getting ever closer to WrestleMania, and I cannot wait for that to hit YouTube. But, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen it before, it is sipping time, ladies and gentlemen. And there they are, the FWF Women's Tag Team Champions. The Carmichael's folks, Carmen and Carmella Carmichael. And you see it there on their shirts, sipping ain't easy. Because you're either a simp or you're a fool, folks. And ain't no fools booing the Carmichael's here tonight. This reaction for the Carmichaels is insane here, ladies and gentlemen. And they are ready to defend these tag team titles. What an opening bout we are going to have set for you tonight. The women kicking off the show. This is going to be a fire event, ladies and gentlemen. A complete turnaround from the fans for the Carmichaels. Listen to this place. It's insane. A lot of sims in the building, folks. We have a lot of sims in the building tonight. Here we go. Opening contest of the evening. And that's what it's for. The MPWF Women's Tag Team Championships. And now listen to this reaction here for Brooklyn Von Braun and Kat Smalls. We mentioned during the entrance they are paired with the Undisputed Women's Champion Justice Fitzgerald. It's been a lot of controversy going on in the women's division in the MPWF. Someone has been playing music, interrupting plenty of the women's matches. Most recently the women's uh, championship match, the CLW Women's World Title matchup, Carmen Carmichael, Sister Carmella faced Lady Izanami, the music played in Carmella was unable to win the championship. And we're going to have to get to the bottom of this. We need to get our investigating goggles on for this situation here, folks. But right now, it's about the tag team titles. And there it is, a boot to the face there by Carmella Carmichael. And the music that played during that CAW Women's World Title matchup was the Mothership's music. The Mothership claimed that they had nothing to do with the music being played. Now... To be fair, at the New Year's Revolution pay-per-view, when the Carmichaels won the tag team titles against the Legacy, it was Fade Bartlett's music that played, a Fade Bartlett we haven't seen in the MPWF for a long time, folks, since SummerSlam 2023. And she will be in the Royal Rumble, in the Royal Rumble matchup on our click review. 
But again, someone has been playing music to interrupt the women's matches. And like we said, we're going to have to get to the bottom of it. We're going to have to find out who it is. Right now, there's not even like a trace. There's not even a pattern. It just seems that it just happens. You know, so hopefully we can figure this out. In the meantime and in between time, Carmella Carmichael was putting a whooping on the mothership. Like we, I mentioned earlier, the mothership's music played and the Carmichaels completely blamed them for Carmella Carmichael losing the CAW Women's World Title. See, the Carmichael's in phenomenal shape. Cat Smalls now in control. The winner of the Queen of the Indies tournament, Cat Smalls, has been very impressive in a short space of time, skipping the World Wrestling future and earning a right here with Brooklyn Von Braun to challenge for the MPWF Women's Tag Team titles. And they defeated Angelina Peace and Ingrid to get here, which is no easy feat. But Carmella now got Brooklyn Von Braun, and Brooklyn Von Braun, a very well known name in the wrestling game community, brought in by Justice Fitzgerald, and in comes Carmen Carmichael. So it was only a year ago that the Carmichaels were booed by the MPWF fans, but that has changed. You saw their simping ain't easy. You know there's going to be a whole bunch of people wearing them t-shirts all around the building. So it's so much to come here on the buy-in show. Then our main event is going to be Shane Carter versus Zeus in a grudge match as Carmen Carmichael is weeping the mothership right now. Oh, wait a minute, Brooklyn Von Braun catch her from behind. She doesn't realize what slam there by Von Braun. Taking over here on Carmen Carmichael. Much to the chagrin of the MPWF fans. We also see a Zero Limits title matchup tonight between Yamamoto Yoshino and t Dot, As well as a blockbuster tag team matchup. It's going to be Chris Chapman, Hector Rodriguez. Versus Marcus Eagle and North American champion Lamar Goldman. A shot there to the midsection. And a nice chop block there by Cat Smalls. She heads to the second rope here. Cat Smalls now switching to a main so and she hits it. Catches the back there of Carmen Carmichael. And I'll go straight into the pin cover here to finish off Carmen Carmichael. But not getting all of it. As well as we will see a matchup between Billy Ray Peterson and Jason Holiday with the winner. Getting his spot in the Royal Rumble matchup, which is massive, folks. But now Braun, Braun brought off the turnbuckle there with a shoulder tackle. Take it down, Carmen and Oki Carmella off the apron. So the Carmichaels would love to turn away these challengers. So far, the Women's Tag Team Championships have changed every single title matchup. In the first matchup, the Legacy won the belts and in their first defense against the Carmichaels. The Legacy lost the belt, so the Carmichael's looking to break that curse here, if you will. You can take that the way you see it, have it the way you want it. And the Mothership do not want that curse broken whatsoever. But wait a minute, roll up here by Carmella Carmichael. So by Carmen Carmichael, two, and all. I I'm going to get their names confused from time to time. They are perfectly identical twins with names that are very similar to Carmen and Car Carmella. You know, I would have a chat with their parents about this. Like, why would you name them this before they became wrestlers? But I digress. Right now, Carmen just suffered three power bombs at the hands of the very powerful Brooklyn Von Braun. And I just want to take into consideration here how well the mothership are working together as a team here in this matchup. Get a very big opportunity. And they do not want to mess it up. You see there are already signs in the crowd. Simple and easy signs. I'm about to get that on a shirt, folks. Send Carmen into the buckle. Now Cat Smalls with a big uppercut. Cat Smalls, a very good wrestler. And we are only just getting to see what Cat Smalls brings to the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. What she brings here to Core Wrestling. She is on top and in control of Carmen Carmichael. Wait a minute, Carmen able to get the tag. And here comes Carmella. And Carmella has been impressive in recent months. Listen to this ovation when she got inside the ring. This crowd has been 100% on her side. And now there's an SDO takedown by Carmella Carmichael. Carmella has been stepping out of her sister's shadow. And is becoming a top dog here in the women's division. And a brain buster there. With the arm hooked. Brain buster. Two. And a kick out there by Cat Smalls. Carmella now taking a shot back at Brooklyn Von Braun. 
Carmella bringing the pace here. Carmella up the top rope with an elbow to the floor. Simply ain't easy, folks. Carmella now getting back inside the ring here. And our cat Smalls with a kick to the knee. And our cat Smalls going for a roll up here to become the new tag team champions. But Carmella kicking out right away. And our Carmella here with a takedown there. And I meant to say Carmella earlier. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It's going to be a long weekend, folks. I can tell you that right now. Now send her into the buckle. Cast balls now face first. And now wait a minute. What is this here? Inverted suplex out the second rope there by Carmella Carmichael. And Carmella Carmichael is all kinds of fired up. Cast balls needs to make the tag as she does. And in comes Brooklyn Von Braun now. And oh! No moving out the way and an elbow drop there by Carmella. When Carmella is a one, one woman gang here, a one woman army taking out the mothership. And Carmella now, oh wait a second. She has Brooklyn Fort Broad hooked it. Oh my goodness. Driving her neck first into the mat. Go for the cover. Two. Oh wow. Carmella Carmichael just came in here and dominated. She just got retribution for the Mothership's music being played. Have you seen Carmella look that good in the ring before, folks? Now, I, you, Carmella just came in and went ballistic, folks. She went Omega Mode in the ring there and took out the Mothership. And still, the MPWF Women's Tag Team Champions, Carmen and Carmella, the the Carmichaels, my goodness folks. And look at that, Carmella Pat and her sister. Carmen very happy about it, but let's face it folks, Carmella came in and turned the hell up in this matchup. Carmella is ready for the Royal Rumble. I, I guarantee there's a bunch of people in the audience who want them, their cherry pies to be the Carmichael, that's for sure. But wait a minute, Carmella Carmichael here to speak to the audience. Tomorrow, Carmella saying, we are fired up tonight. This was only the beginning. We've got one more match this weekend, and that is the FWF Royal Rumble. I rest assured that either me or my sister is winning the whole damn thing. One of us is main event in WrestleMania. And let that be a lesson for whoever keeps interfering in women's wrestling matches. We will find you and we will take you out. Whoever it is, is a fool because simping ain't easy. It ain't easy, folks. Well, what a moment there for those two sisters. The Carmichael's picking up a victory here at the buy-in show in front of 70,000 plus people. They are still the women's tag team champions, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you right now. If you play in the music, wait a second here, we got breaking news, folks. The Blood Brothers have been injured and we will need to vacate the CAW World Tag Team Championships. I am being told in my headset that the Blood Brothers were unable to make it here to the building and there will be more on this as the show continues, folks. But that is complete breaking news here. Again, I will not lose this subject. We will keep up with this here at the buying show. But look at this backstage entering the building. It's Dr. Ice. And Dr. Ice, man, what a night he had on MPWF War. So close to becoming the interim CAW World Champion. A cruel set of circumstances for Dr. Ice. But again, he has the Royal Rumble coming up. And a lot to focus on. And here Harry Prince saying, Ice, I know that you're focused on the Royal Rumble match later tonight, but the fans want to know your thoughts and feelings about the interim world title match on MPWF War. You were so close to winning the title. Everyone wanted you to win it. How are you feeling? Dr. Ice almost escaped out the cage, but Kivo able to escape through the door. But Dr. Ice saying, Harry, quite honestly, I feel like a failure. Everything Mason Gray has ever said about me, I proved him right. When the lights were up bright, I failed to win the world championship. That is the story of my career on YouTube. I am more than this, I know it. What's gonna happen tonight though, Harry? Am I just gonna enter the Royal Rumble and have a respectable showing? Do the MPW fans even have me picked as one of the favorites to win the Royal Rumble anymore? I need a change of fortune. I need something big to happen. I need a sign to tell me that all of this is worth it, that I am worth it. I need something, Harry.
There's a lot going on the mind in there of Dr. Ice, folks. And I, and I wish the best for him. I wish the best for him. But I tell you this, folks. There is two people coming to the ring right now that, on a personal basis, I do not wish the best for. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the beautiful angels, Jason Holiday and beautiful Bobby Martin Kyle. And we have ourselves a matchup where Jason Holiday will take on Billy Ray Peterson. But take a look at what happened on and Underground Billy Episode Ray Peterson. 7. If he can hit that power driver on Bobby Martin Kyle, that would be all she said. Oh, wait a minute, look at this here. Jason Holiday with the relaxed hair, distracting Bobby Martin Kyle. He is the tag partner of beautiful Bobby Martin Kyle and causing a distraction here. And Billy Ray Peterson saying, oh, well, what I've done with him, I'm going to get you. And now, wait a minute, go for the roll. There's Bobby Martin Kyle here, too. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. So on episode 7, Jason Holiday screwed and cost Billy Ray Peterson his matchup against beautiful Bobby Martin Kyle. And tonight, the general manager of Annihilation, KK Clam, has made this match where Jason Holiday will take on Billy Ray Peterson. The winner will enter the Royal Rumble matchup. And this crowd here is booing the hell out of the beautiful angels and I cannot blame them. I mean, did he get, did he get extensions in his hair, Jason Holiday? The biracial angel with the relaxed hair, with the extensions, with the 50 inch lace front wig, you name it, this man is showing out with his hair here, folks. But I tell you, a man that don't care about lace front wigs, ladies and gentlemen, the hardcore icon, Billy Ray Mother Friggin Peterson. And look at the shape this man is in, folks. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the home of hardcore, Mr. B.R.P. Again, just kudos to the shape that Billy Ray Peterson has got himself in at this age and this stage in his career. I would love nothing more for a major moment for that man right here, Billy Ray Peterson. And he is going to be looking for some retribution against the beautiful angels here tonight on the buying show. Man, it's, a, like I said, it's a crazy reaction here to Mr. Billy Ray Peterson. I tell you, this crowd will pop like crazy, folks. Pop, pop. If Jason Holiday takes a loss here to Billy Ray Peterson tonight. But it's not going to be easy. As tough as Billy Ray Peterson is, you got to be real tough to have hair like that by Jason Holiday. And Jason Holiday is tough. It's Billy Ray Peterson coming in with a clothesline. But Billy Ray Peterson is going to watch out for the numbers game. Many a superstar in the MPWF has struggled to that. Billy Ray Peterson, Kane Knight, among others. And I got a shot here by Billy Ray Peterson. Jason Holiday, on the other hand, needs this victory here tonight. Jason Holiday at the last clip review was in the Elimination Chamber matchup for the MPWF World Heavyweight Championship. And here he is on the buy-in show, again still, wrestling on the clip review. But Jason Holiday has been unable to challenge for a championship in a specific view like that since then. You know, he accepted the open challenge in equal mathematics, but Jason Holiday hasn't picked up a victory since before Elimination Chamber. And I know that the beautiful angels are not going to be happy with me putting that out there to the universe, but again, it's dire straits. Like I said, releases could come at any time, folks. That's what I said. Look at the shape Billy Ray Peterson's got himself in. Billy Ray Peterson, this time last year, was in jeopardy of that. And he's got himself into literally the best shape of his career. And he's got Jason Holiday up now. A Holiday in trouble. He goes face first into the barricade. And Billy Ray Peterson trying to bust up those beautiful features of the biracial angel. But yeah, we spoke about the MPWF Championship at the Royal Rumble. MPWF World Heavyweight Champion Max Payne will defend the title against the unwanted shadow Helios Christ in what will be an incredible matchup from the Annihilation brand. The Annihilation brand providing quite a few matches for the Royal Rumble. The tag team titles will be on the line. 
It will be between the Commonwealth and the Young Ones to finish up the best of five series. Nice net break there by Jason Holiday, as well as a triple threat match for the YouTube title. Lethal Mathematics defends against Jamie Emo and CJ Parker. And now, off the second rope, and a drop kick there by Jason Holiday. Yeah, we're, we're hoping to get more news of what happened with the Blood Brothers, folks. The Blood Brothers just won the CLW Tag Team titles in Madison Square Garden, and we have been told they have to vacate them here tonight. And they're not even in the building. The belts have been delivered to the building. And again, I hope I can get much more on that, folks. And whilst I was talking, I completely missed it. The beautiful Bobby Martin Kyle undid the turnbuckle, and Billy Ray Peterson went stern and first into the turnbuckle. And that's what I'm saying. That's what we have to watch out for here. And Jason Holly telling Billy Ray Peterson to strike out. Look at this here. He's telling him to strike at him. In the meantime, Bobby Martin Kyle was tripping up his legs. But wait a minute. These two men are out of nothing. They're going fist to cuff with each other. Billy Ray Peterson winning that exchange. And we got ourselves a fight here, folks. And now, there that net break in there by Billy Ray Peterson. And BRP now hooking the leg for the cover, but the referee had to do the turnbuckle. The referee tied the turnbuckle up. And Jason Holiday now in the cover. Oh, man. Billy Ray Peterson would have had that match won. Had the referee not been distracted by that turnbuckle cover. And now Billy Ray Peterson sent Holiday into the turnbuckle. But Holiday fights back here in a close line there by the by Racial Angel. You have to think at some point though, the beautiful angels would love to be the tag team champions on Annihilation with a spinning suplex there by Jason Holiday. And a kick out there by Billy Ray Peterson. I do have to give kudos to Holiday, even though he's a man about his looks. He's bleeding right now, and he is focused on punishing Billy Ray Peterson. Focused on the opportunity to compete in the Royal Rumble. And I wait a minute, look at this again here. Bobby Martin, Kyle, are doing the turnbuckle again. Come on, this is outrageous. Just kick him out. Just kick him out. They've already done enough to cheat with Billy Ray Peterson. And I wait, Billy Ray Peterson fighting back here, though. And now Billy Ray Peterson got Jason Holly. Oh, he says Jason Holly face first into the upper deck to turnbuckle. Uh, oh, it might have backfired. It might have backfired there. And uh, Bobby Martin Kyle is uh, upset now on the outside. Now look at that Billy Ray Peterson dive into the outside of the ring. The cheating ways of the beautiful angels might have backfired here tonight. And the referee trying to get them inside the ring. He's asking them to keep this clean, but that is far from done. There ain't nothing clean about what's going on in this matchup right now. And now went for the pop-up power bomb, but Jason Holiday able to reverse it. And now Jason Holiday has Billy Ray Peterson up there. Oh my goodness. A Shima suplex onto the back of the knee for the cover here. Two. And now Billy Ray Peterson gets the shoulder up. Now the referee gonna put the turnbuckle pad back on for the second time here. And now Jason Holly block shot there by Billy Ray Peterson. And with Billy Ray Peterson now. And wait a minute, Billy Peterson! Oh Peterson with the referee didn't see it! Turn it on his fair play! Turn it on his fair play! Billy Ray Peterson with the victory! The hardcore icon outsmarts the beautiful angels here tonight on the buy-in show. They were cheating this entire matchup. Jason Holiday hit Billy Ray Peterson on the unprotected turnbuckle. Billy Ray Peterson pulled Bryce nuts out. He had the ultimate equalizer. And Billy Ray Peterson will now qualify to be in the Royal Rumble matchup. What a win here tonight on the Bayern Show. And listen to this place here in MetLife Stadium. Now that is huge, folks. Turnabout is fair play, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Ray Peterson weren't playing no games with them boys, but wait a minute, we are backstage here with the legend killer, Shane Carter. Harry Prince says, Shane, you like many others, are very focused on tonight's Royal Rumble match. 
The opportunity to main event WrestleMania is within your grasp. You have just one more pit stop before the Royal Rumble, and that is Zeus. Will Zeus stop you from achieving your destiny? Carter says, nothing, and I mean nothing, can stop my destiny at the Royal Rumble. It doesn't matter if the final two is Shane and Lethal, Shane and Chris Champ, Shane and the hometown boy, the Cypher, hell it could be Shane and a legend like Joey Eagle, nothing will change my destiny. I am going to WrestleMania, so as for Zeus, Zeus can't stop my destiny. He can whine and bitch and complain, but the fact of the matter is that he is nor will ever be like Shane Carter. He will not be the 2024 Royal Rumble winner. I've been the legend killer for so long in my career, but now I want to become the legend, the world heavyweight champion. Well, this could be all possible in our main event tonight. Shane Carter will battle Zeus, but here we are in the ring with Brian Adams to hear about the situation with the Blood Brothers. Brian Adams says, I'm out here right now with some unfortunate news that DJ had mentioned earlier in commentary. The Blood Brothers have been injured. They were assaulted in the airport after flying back home this from this weekend's event. They wanted to celebrate the CW Tag Titles, but they were jumped in the airport and will be both out of action and miss tonight's event. Usually I would say the title match in WWE 4 or whenever the Blood Brothers are healthy, but Mason Gray has insisted that new champions are crowned this weekend. Well, there you have it, folks. I just want to quickly apologize. There were some audio issues during Billy Ray Peterson and Jason Holiday. We will fix them as this show goes on, but hang on a second. Brian Adams here to try and make this announcement. And this is the two men here that were supposed to face them at the Royal Rumble. And quite frankly, I believe these two men have something to do with the Blood Brothers being unable to make it here. Greg James and Reese Bobby, the Righteous. And what the hell do they look like with them outfits out right now? They look like used car salesmen making their way to the ring here. Again, they're very good in the ring. But I have a feeling that the Righteous have something to do with the Blood Brothers not making it here tonight. Reese Bobby says, you know, we find it kind of bad that the CW Tag Champions, Kevin and Dylan Frost, refuse to show up to work this weekend. They are so scared of us that they faked an injury at an airport to escape losing to us once again. It's honestly quite a shame. And this defamation here by the Righteous. Greg James saying, we would have loved to end this rivalry in the center of the ring at the Royal Rumble, but it just seems that some people can't look where they're going or fell over and injured themselves at the airport. Who wants irresponsible champions? Grade A douches, folks. Greg says, not Mr. Gray. So, Brian, if you could all do us a favor, hand us back the CW Tag Team titles, and we'll be on our way. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I agree with this crowd. At ruining what would have been a phenomenal matchup at the Royal Rumble. Brian Adams says, you idiots seem to forget that I used to be on Mason Gray. I used to be Mason Gray's powder one. That the reason you even won the titles was because of me. Clearly I messed up and you two are not worthy of being tag champions. The Blood Brothers should have held those belts all along. I'm not stupid. I know you attacked them. And when they come back, I'm going to give them free wainer on your ass. And as an apology to them, they will get a shot back at their titles. But we need to deal with tonight. You aren't facing the Blood Brothers, but I'm sure as hell not handing you these titles. Wait a second. What does he mean by that? What the hell does he mean by that? So you see, you two have doubly pissed me off because I had to reach out to two men I absolutely hate. But it's what's best for MPWF War. So the two of you in Jehovah Witness Slacks will compete for the tag titles right now. Right now. Wait a second. Right now? In the JV Slacks? The Righteous? Who are they facing? For the tag team titles right now? But wait a minute, that's Nexus Gold's music. But Chris Chap is wrestling later tonight.
And I mean, Blind Adams did see how to reach out to too many hates. Oh my goodness, folks! That's not just Dr. Rice. That's Dr. Rice and former Premier World Champion, the Eclipse, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a damn minute. That is Dr. Rice and the Eclipse, formerly Team Hall of Fame. Next is going here tonight, folks. I can't even hear in my headset right now. This crowd is going nuts. Brian Adams says that he is not handing the Righteous the Tag Team titles, even though Mason Gray said that new champions had to be crowned here this weekend, which is completely unfair to the Blood Brothers, because who knows when the Blood Brothers are coming back. But the upside is, is that Dr. Rice Jr. and a returning Eclipse will be challenging for the titles tonight against the Righteous in the JV Slacks. So there you have it, CAW World Tag Team titles on the line here tonight. Uh, can you believe what is happening here on the buying show already? Can you believe what is happening here already? We are 30 minutes into this show, folks. It's only 30 minutes. Look at that. The Eclipse with Dr. Rice here tonight. Look at Greg James. Looks like he's about to give me a pamphlet. And I, oh man, he just got pamphlet right to the mat by Dr. Rice here. But I can't believe this. So you can hear how tough it was for Brian Adams to announce that he had found two men to challenge the Righteous for the tag team titles. Dr. Rice was talking earlier tonight about how we needed a sign. Well, here is your sign. And the Eclipse here tonight as well. This is huge, folks. We haven't seen the Eclipse in the MPWF in over two years. The Eclipse missed WrestleMania of last year, but I'm telling you right now, the Eclipse back here tonight. I don't think he's missing WrestleMania this year, folks. Former MPWF World Champion former MPWF internet and YouTube champion. The Eclipse had one of the longest undefeated streaks in MPWF history. Dr. Rice and the Eclipse both being world champions at the same WrestleMania. Which is a fun fact for MPWF fans. German suplex there by Dr. Rice. I don't believe it. Greg James needs to do something though. The Righteous came out too cocky. They thought that they were getting handed these belts. And like I said, the Jehovah's Witness slaps, folks. JV slaps. That's going to be patented now. I mean, they do look ridiculous. So, I mean, they definitely can't win this matchup. Now, could you imagine Reese, Bobby, and Greg James holding up the CNW Tag Team Champions in them JV slaps right now? There's an uppercut there by Reese Bobby. He waving to the crowd. But no, Dr. Rice blocking that here. Dr. Rice now with a right hand and a big time clothesline there by Dr. Rice. Rice now picking up. Reese whipping him into the ropes. Dr. Rice now with a big time body slam and a hook in the leg here. And kick out. I mean, forget JV Slacks. Reese, Bobby, and Greg James kind of look a little bit like J&J &J Security. Does anybody remember J&J &J Security? Honestly, the two of my favorite wrestlers, man. At that time period, getting to see a modern-day version of Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe, RIP to Pat Patterson, was amazing, folks. A kick to the knee there by the Eclipse. A lot of right hand. And look at that. Reese Bobby don't know where he is. The Eclipse is on fire tonight. Again, the Eclipse here. I wasn't expecting this. And Reese Bobby flying for the tag. And the Eclipse now on the top rope. And the Eclipse on a spinning heel kick. Off the top, and Nexus Gold is dominating right now, folks. They are whooping the righteous of Greg James Hall with a shoulder tackle and an elbow. And again, the righteous are very, very capable as a tag team. 
Again, the former CAW Tag Team Champions thought that they were going to get out tonight here by taking out the Blood Brothers. And we wish the Blood Brothers a speedy recovery. And to keep up with the Blood Brothers, follow at Frost Nations on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, the Blood Brothers will be back in the MPWF. And they are going to be royally pissed at what their tag team titles back. They've worked so hard to get to those tag team titles. And the Righteous once again, once again, cost the Blood Brothers the opportunity to be the tag team champions. Like, at, at this point, the Blood Brothers are going to pull out the Draco and go off on, on the Righteous. That's just my opinion. You know, you can take it the way you see it, have it the way you want it. No way. Block shot there by the Eclipse. And Eclipse flies back with kicks, but an elbow to the knee there by Greg James. And Greg James now throwing the Eclipse into the turnbuckle. And uh, makes the tag and Reese Bobby back inside the ring here. And a Reese Bobby with a big time punch to the midsection of that breaker. And now the Righteous back in control, but in comes Dr. Ice. And the Ice Man, what a shoulder tackle. And a clothesline there by Dr. Ice. And now these strikes here on Reese Bobby. And now sidewalk slam there by Ice. Ice lighting up the Righteous here tonight. Kick to the midsection here. Dr. Ice now going for the Dominator. And he hits it. Dominator there by Dr. Ice. Hooking the leg here for the cover. For the win. And I'll break up there by Reese Bobby. It's tag team partner Greg James. And a big clothesline taking Dr. Ice's. Sorry, taking Greg James's skull right off of his head. I don't even know if that's possible, but he did it, folks. And now whipping Reese Bobby into the bucket. And now here's the tag. And now the Eclipse going to the top. What are they going for here? Dr. Wright's now has him on one buckle. And wait a second, Dr. Wright's now suplex. Ice off the top rope. The Eclipse now with the power of glory with the cover two. And we have new CAW Tag Team Champions, folks. Power and glory on the top turn buckle by the Eclipse of Dr. Rice, ladies and gentlemen. And can you believe it? Look at that power and glory. And now, the brand new CAW Tag Team Champions, something that we were not expecting tonight, the return of the Eclipse to the win. Again, we wish a speedy recovery to the Blood Brothers, but in the meantime and in between time, Lexus Gold has stepped up as the new Tag Team Champions. And wait a second, Ari quits now to get a word with Nexus Gold here. And Prince says, what an incredible turn of events, Ice. We talked literally earlier tonight about how you needed something to change, and it did. You took advantage of an opportunity with the Eclipse and became the CW World Tag Team Champions. How do you feel, Ice? Ice says, I feel great. This is exactly what I was looking for. A way to rebound off the loss to Kivo. Brian has both people presented the opportunity and we took it. My boy, the Eclipse, has returned. And he has, folks. The Eclipse is back in the MPWF. I says, Nexus Gold is growing and we are here to stop all wrongdoers. We are protectors of the MPWF. Chris Jarrett will show you later tonight and we will all show you in the Royal Rumble as the CAW World Tag Team Champions. And Prince says, "At Eclipse, welcome back to the MPWF. I want you to know how, want to know how you're feeling as well. Before you left, you and Ice were a part of Team Hall of Fame, and you were unable to capture the tag titles. And now you've returned as a part of Nexus Gold. You are the new CAW World Tag Team Champions." The Eclipse says, "I've been planning this return for quite some time now, and I'm happy that I'm healthy enough to do it. And that I am a part of the Nexus, the one of the hardest workers I know, and Dr. Ice." I'm with a group that is facilitating one of the best young talents in Chris Champ as well. You never know what opportunity is going to come up and when it's going to be your last day in the wrestling ring. These CW World Tag Team titles are special and they represent resilience and heart and passion. And we're going to do everything we can to keep them. And Blood Brothers, we are waiting for your return.
So there you have it, folks. A message there from Nexus Gold, the new tag team champions, the Eclipse and Dr. Rice. And there you have it, folks. My goodness, what a moment here at the Bayern Show. Things are just heating up, folks. Wait, look at this backstage with Kibo. Kibo on the phone and Kibo says, so what you're telling me is that I can't just punt Brian Adams back into the hospital again? Who cares what your sister thinks? By becoming a good guy, he's already caused problems. Nexus Gold has the titles. But how are we supposed to know that you wanted to get the tag titles of Ken Parchi and Tennessee's? Tennessee's apologized and Mass Payne destroyed him. What was that all about? I don't want your side, but Tennessee's a brother. That was uncalled for. When are you coming back to the MPWF? Are you going to be at the Royal Rumble? Kivo says, we could have used you at the Rumble. But I'm not afraid of Sean Stevens. I waited for over a decade to put him in his place. Talk to you later, Mr. Gray. Kivo says, I'll do what Max Payne could not. Then we heard from Mace Mason Gray on the phone there, but we haven't seen him yet, folks. You know, it's crazy how much Mason Gray is still influencing the MPWF. Even with Meredith Gray in control whilst he's gone. You know, it's insane. But folks, we're going to continue here with the Annihilation brand. We have ourselves a Zero Limit Championship match. And look at this, folks. Hamith the Dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, Yamamoto Yoshino. Yamamoto Yoshino has been on a path of discovery with his father in recent months in the MPWF. The legend Yamasaki Yoshino has been trying to unleash the dragon in his son and I believe it has come folks. Tonight he will battle T-Dot for the Zero Limits Championship. This will be one hell of a fight. I tell you this though, he looked cool as hell, ladies and gentlemen. Part of the Japanese drill music too as well. This boy is getting booed by this crowd, but I'll tell you right now, I would boo Yamamoto Yoshino if I was a kid. This would be one of my guys right here. Pure bias this little commentary, but look at this, the son of the dragon. But again, you can be a dragon, because the Dragon Slayer is coming to the ring right now. But Destroyer Tito getting a mixed reaction here tonight. Again, folks, MetLife Stadium is technically in East Rutherford, New Jersey. But there is enough fans from New York that is making noise for the hometown boy from New York, the Zero Limits champion Tito. So this is going to be an interesting reaction from this crowd for not only T-Doc, but for the Emperor of Heavyweight Champion Max Payne, for the Cypher later tonight. We already know what has going to happen with Lamar Goldman. But T-Doc the Destroyer, and let's take a look at how this all came to fruition, folks. The Zero Limits Champion is T-Doc. What a match, folks. Again, who I ask? Who? And again, we didn't even mention this. Tito is definitely one of the men who are favorites to win the World Rumble. And his size, his speed, his youth. And again, picking up wins like that. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Look at this here. Yamasaki Yoshino. Face to face with Tito. And Yoshino saying, My son's transformation to the dragon is almost complete. His failures began with you and they will end with you. You have been chosen. Yoshino sending a hit out to Tito. He's been chosen. Oh, wait a minute. With the kendo stick, Yamasaki Yoshino's son, Yamamoto. 
Jackie Tito from behind it. Oh my goodness. Smashing the kendo stick over the score. And there's the KTFO. The KTFO by Yamamoto Yoshino. Now look at that, folks. T Dot has been chosen, and the challenger is that man right there, Yamamoto Yoshino. Man, what a. And now look at this. Look at this. Are we looking at the next Zero Limits champion? In Yamamoto Yoshino, folks, will this be the reason the dragon comes out? I like T Dot wasted no time here. Whilst we were getting the recap of what was going on, T Dot getting him some a Yamamoto Yoshino. So there you see it, folks. Yoshino has chosen T Dot, and T Dot, I can say, no, T Dot go right after Yamasaki Yoshino. T Dot don't care how old this man is. These men have came to him and caused nothing but disrespect. And you ain't disrespecting nobody like Tito. But like I said, after this match is done, we, we call him the Dragon Slayer. But folks, this is a false count anywhere, anything goes rules match. So for anybody watching the episode for the first time, firstly, thank you. We appreciate that you're here enjoying the action. But the Zero Limits Championship, basically what this title is, whoever is the champion sets the rules for the title. There is no limits. Zero limits, in fact. So right now, T-Dot has set the championship rules that any matchup will be a false count anywhere, pinfall, anything goes match. Now, if Yamamoto Yoshino was able to somehow defeat T-Dot here tonight, Yamamoto Yoshino, on the next episode of Annihilation, will set the rules for the Zero Limits Championship Whilst he is the champion. As now on the top rope is Yamamoto Yoshino. Yamamoto there with a cross body off the top taking down T-Dot. But the only thing is we haven't seen a different set of rules. Because so far since SummerSlam. T-Dot has held that championship. And nobody has been able to beat him for the title. Oh the right hand there by T-Dot catching Yamamoto Yoshino. And an off four on here. And now whipping Yoshino into the ropes here. Oh, what a chop block that was there by the destroyer Tito. So Tito didn't come here to play at all. So Tito, again, is going to be loving the fact that the New York crowd is here. But at the same time, they're going to be focusing on it. He's going to be focusing on taking out the trash here. You see he just launched that trash can. Okay, Yamasaki Yoshino yelling at him. But if I was Yamasaki Yoshino, I would stay on the same side. But there's this combination of kicks from that educated feet there of Yamamoto Yoshino. And oh, mad face first into the steel ring post goes t -Dot. And now Yamamoto go for a weapon and got a kendo stick here. The weapon he used against t -Dot and now dropping him with that shot. And going straight for the cover here to become the new Zero Limits champion. He didn't even get a one count. He went for that wheel kick for one too many times. T-Dot saw it coming. But again, I found it interesting that Yamaki, Yamasaki Yoshino said that Yamamoto Yoshino's failure started with T-Dot. For those of you that don't remember, on the World Wrestling Future, T-Dot won his first World Wrestling Future title by pinning and defeating Yamamoto Yoshino. And since then, Yamamoto Yoshino has been in a up and down battle moving his way up the MPWF roster whereas T-Dot like we mentioned came straight to the main roster on Annihilation and has dominated Zero Limits champion now, oh my goodness a shot to the skull with the trash can go for the cover does the Zero Limits champion oh just a one count though Yoshida able to kick out but could have possible CTE symptoms after that and I'll send him into the buckle and now T-Dot here with the shoulder strikes. T-Dot has been the likes of the Avenger, Billy Ray Peterson, and the legit one Richard Hawkins. Again, if you haven't seen Underground Episode 7, when this is done, 
The fight between Tito and Hawkins was incredible for the Zero Limits title, but there's a bat breaker there by Yoshino. And Yoshino now with the trash can. And now Yoshino. Oh, man. Bouncing Tito. Stole first there on the trash can. And now Yoshino going in for a triangle choke here. Trying to wear the big man down. But T Dot fighting back out here. Heavy hands on Yoshino. A very important situation here. Both these men will be in the Royal Rumble matchup. Yoshino with the belt there, Yoshino reverse it. And let's not forget here, folks, Yoshino has challenged Tito for the Zero Limits title and failed. This is not Yoshino's first go at it against Tito, but I, this man had an out of body experience. You all remember that SpongeBob meme with the Kanye West song where he's floating to the heavens? That's what happened to Yamamoto Yoshino there. I, I have never, I have never seen anything like that, folks. And right now, Yoshino is getting back some retribution with that belt. Yoshino just got knocked into another multiverse there with that move. That was crazy, folks. That was crazy. I tell you, these two are beating the hell out of each other right now. You know, I'm talking about all kinds of lore and backstory and building up history between these two. Meanwhile, they are beating the dog out of each other here tonight in this matchup. All of this to become the Zero Limits Champion, folks. Now look at that T-Dot getting thrown. And now a drop kick there, T-Dot firing back here. I mean, T-Dot just needs to hit him with another one of those double back fists, and this will be all she said and, and done here, folks. And now T-Dot with a table. Oh, man. Dropping Yoshino. Knocking him all spaghetti-legged. And oh, man. Face first into the steel ring post goes Yoshino. I'm telling you, man. I, I still cannot get over that. Double back fists. Double cheek tuck on a Thursday afternoon. The sun is out, my brother. And T-Dot throwing Yoshino back inside the ring here. This is, that, that, that was crazy, folks. I don't know what else you want me to tell you. That was crazy. T-Dot firing back here, though. And now back body drop dropping down Yoshino. T-Dot now got Yoshino up there as a spy buster. Spine on the pine. And now Yoshino with the table. And now this is bad for Yoshino. Yamasaki's got his fair share of a whipping here. Oh, there it is again. There it is again. That's it. That's it, folks. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yamasaki Yoshino distracted T-Bot to save his son's life, folks. Yoshino is out cold. And now T-Dot missing the opportunity to get the cover there because Yoshino was finished. Yoshino was finished. And now, wait a minute. And oh, man, belly to belly suplex through the table. T-Dot is bouncing, folks. Tia is bouncing, folks. 
A great event at Yamasaki. Distracted T Dot again. He is trying to save his son's title aspirations with everything he got, folks. With everything he got. Oh, Yoshino though fights back. And oh, KTFO! KTFO by Yoshino, and that's it! KTFO 2! T Dot kicks out! T Dot kicks out of Yoshino, can't believe it! And neither can his father! Yamasaki Yoshino is irate, folks. The KTFO did not put away Tino here tonight. And now Yamamoto with the steel steps. Tino and Trumple in there face first with the steel steps. And they gotta go back to the drawing board here, folks. To the drawing board here, folks. And now what's Yoshino going for? Tito split spaghetti leg completely. There's a backstabber. And what your best move? It didn't work. It didn't work. It has a clothesline. And another clothesline to Tito. And now Subot kick right to the face. Now what's Yoshino got in mind here? T dot still shaky after that shot there. The KTFO. And now T dot. Oh my goodness! Inverted slam onto the table piece. And Yoshino go for the cover again here to become the new Zero Limits champion. And no! 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 It ain't happening! He's the destroyer for a reason! It ain't happening! Oh man! Just snap that kendo stick over the skull! Over the skull! And now wait a minute! With an O to his father! With an O to Osaka! The Osaka Street Cutter! And Yoshino look at the leg there! With a cover! And oh my goodness! The dragon has come tonight! That's crazy! That's crazy, folks! That spinning back, this thing is nuts! And T Dot would have retained for sure tonight. But it was practically a handicap match. It was practically a handicap match. And there it is, folks. The first person to beat T Dot for that title. A brand new Zero Limits champion. Yamamoto Yoshino. Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. A new champion is crowned tonight. Osaka, stand up. Because that's the man right there. There you have it, folks. The dragon has come. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, don't, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube at MPWF Wrestling. The Royal Rumble is coming up. This is only a preview to the event, and it's already been a crazy night, folks. But I cannot believe it. A brand new Zero Limits champion. So t -Dot ain't gonna be happy at all, folks. But look at this here. Backstage with Lamar Goldman and Marcus Eagle, who will be competing up next. Lamar Goldman says times are changing in the MPWF. The youth is taking the throne from the veterans. Mark my words, the next generation is going to dominate WrestleMania. And that all starts tonight. That all starts at the Royal Rumble. That starts with myself and Marcus Eagle. Eagle came to me and convinced me that how, we, how I was going about my career wasn't working. Look at Kivo. Kivo played the game for 14 years. 14 years that he broke every rule in front of him. And now he has a chance to be the undisputed CAW World Champion. I'm the next big thing, and I want that for myself. I have the North American title, but that isn't enough. I targeted Chris Chat because he beat me in the title tournament. 
Chris Champ is a failure. He's been the next big thing since we came back to YouTube. And what world title has he won? None. The MPWF wastes time, money, and effort on Chris Champ. He will never be me, second generation star, next big thing, and a future world heavyweight champion. I'm not quite to the level of scum my boy Marcus is, but I understand it. And we're going to show you tonight. Marcus says, I've sat and watched my father side with the good guys in the MPWF. I've watched him lose his job in front of every friend and family member we have. I watched my parents separate through discovery of my brother and my father getting himself kicked out of the MPWF by Mason Gray. I gave up four years of my career fighting my father in the MPWF's pointless battles. I questioned it and got called scum. I should be a world champion by now, at least a multi-time singles champion, but I have achieved nothing. That all changes from here on out. Tonight will be a statement. I won't be like Hector Rodriguez. He has fought the Epidemius battles. He has fought for the people. And what has that gotten him? What has that accomplished him? He should be a multi-time world champion. Instead, he is a cripple with one leg. I am scum, and I'm damn proud of it. Secure is scum, and she's going to win the Women's Royal Rumble, and my brother Lamar is the future. There are two of us, and two world titles, and we're going to take over the MPWF. Mark our words. Well, they're very intense words, but folks, their opponents, Chris Champ and Hector Rodriguez. Rodriguez says, I'm not even going to deny what Marcus has said. I have had a failed run since being back on YouTube. I walked in a US champion and have won one title since then, and that was the hardcore title. I teamed my brother Lee for mathematics and still failed to become a tag team champion. I've changed my gimmick. I've challenged giants, legends, hell even you, Chris, my partner tonight. There was a time I turned my back on the fans. Marcus, there was a time I thought like you. But no matter what happens tonight in my career, I will keep fighting. You've tried to take me out on multiple occasions, Marcus, but you've never kept me out. It eats you alive that you cannot beat me. It may not be a champion, but at least I know you can never move forward till you beat me, and I won't let that happen. I'm your biggest hater, Marcus, and I will beat you again tonight. I mean, we've seen a lot with haters recently on, on the internet, folks. Chris Jones saying, I'm not going to ramble on for long. After watching Ice and Eclipse win the tag team titles, that motivated me more than ever to win a championship, to bring one home for the Nexus goal. I'm close to the CNW World Championship. I can sense it. These people can sense it. The Chris World Champ agenda is still loud and proud. Lamar, you cost me the World Championship. Regardless of how you feel about me or the statement you want to make, I'm going to beat your ass and take everything from you. Everything from you. A statement there from Chris Champ and Hector Rodriguez. Folks, we got a blockbuster tag team matchup on the War Brand coming up next here on The Buy-In Show. And there he is, folks, Scum himself, the leader of the generation of Scum, Marcus Eagle. He has fully transformed himself. He has, he put it out there, folks. Marcus Eagle ain't playing for, for keeps. He is coming for the world championship. That's what he wants. Some people might say that's crazy, but... Quite frankly, that's the mindset you need. The question is not about his mindset, it's about how he's going about it. The fact that he was able to convince his best friend Lamar Golden to turn to the dark side. Marcus Eagle has a chip on his shoulder and he wants to prove himself. He wants the rest of 2024 to be his year and he has a chance in the World Rumble matchup. And more importantly, he has a chance right now in this tag team matchup here. The second generation man, the man with the green eyes, Marcus Eagle.
And one of us going through his head with Hector Rodriguez pointing out the fact that he cannot beat Rodriguez. He don't want that to be a thing here tonight. But again, this is this is a dominating team here. This is a, a, a hefty team here. The brand new North American champion, second generation superstar Lamar Goldman. And again, we still have yet to hear from his father, Antonio Goldman, who was injured at the hands of Kibo, was in the hospital bed right along the side of his son. But his son has returned, defeated Shane Carter to become the North American champion. And has a, a confidence and a swagger that we had, we didn't know it was possible out of Lamar Goldman. And he was the most confident and, and swaggerful person before. The self-proclaimed next big thing in the MPWF. We, we've seen his run on YouTube as World Wrestling Future Champion. And already he has become the North American Champion. The World Championship could be in his sights as well very soon. And you heard it from both men. There's two world titles in the MPWF. So they seem to be a proper, proper unit here, folks. And here comes a young legend of the game, Hector Rodriguez, folks. Rodriguez says that he has been in the shoes of Marcus Evil before he's been down that path. You remember 2012 to 2013. But Hector Rodriguez found the, the right side of the path through El Mosco Luchaderas. And Hector Rodriguez has never turned back since then, folks. And he said he won't. But he said that what keeps him up at night, and this is pure hater energy, is that Marcus Eden cannot take the next step in his career until he beats Hector Rodriguez. And as long as Rodriguez continues to beat him, Marcus Eagle will be stuck. And he is happy to be that man. Now, granted, Hector Rodriguez would love to win the World Rumble. He would love to be the winner of the World Rumble coming up here as well. But again, pure hater energy for Marcus Eagle. Here comes the man now. The Chris World Champ agenda is still in full 100% fruition, folks. Listen to this ovation for Chris Champ. This man should be the interim CAW World Champion right now. The Mark Goldman screwed him at New Year's Revolution. The effort that Chris Chap put forth at New Year's Revolution was spectacular. These fans completely believed in him. There is people now that will never do Chris Chap again after that performance in New Year's Revolution against Kibo. But he was put out of action after taking a punt kick to the skull. But Chris Chap returned and came straight after Lamar Goldman and Marcus Eagle was collateral damage. You know Chris Chap is thinking big time about the Royal Rumble matchup. But he wants to get a modicum of retribution here tonight. Today, heavy matchup here for these four men before the Royal Rumble. Again, don't forget our main event tonight, Shane Carter versus Zeus. Another big time matchup with two big time favorites to win the Royal Rumble. As well as that triple threat match at the Royal Rumble for the YouTube title between Jane Evo, Lethal Mathematics, and CJ Parker. They will be all competing. So, you know, it's like, there's a few people that's going to be doing double duty here this weekend. But here we go. Marcus Eagle and Rodriguez starting it off. Right now, they go right at each other. Fast pace action between these two men. Hector Rodriguez was always the youngest person in the MPWF until, obviously, recent years. Now you have younger stars like Marcus Eagle, who is trying to make a name for himself. Again, like I mentioned, when we saw the four of these men on MPWF War here, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is the North American title division right here. I mean, again, you can take it the way you see it, have it the way you want it, but right here, this, these four men could do something special in MPWF War, I'm telling you that right now. Marcus now, throwing Rodriguez to the big man, Lamar Goldman. Lamar Goldman, turning his back on the MPWF fans, 
of getting a punt kick from Kiva. The only people that visited him in the hospital was his opposition, was Marcus Eagle and Kiva. And he looked at Kibo's success and he listened to what Marcus Eagle had to say. And again, it's hard to fault him. Lamar Goldman is the current reigning and defending North American champion. But he's also the reason that Chris Chapp is not the interim world champion right now. And Rodriguez making a tag and in comes Chris Chapp. And Chris Chapp has been waiting for a while to get his hands on Lamar Goldman. And look at these strikes here and dropping him. Chris Champ, Colorado Bow tie up. Now look at this ripcord here and a big slam there by Chris Champ. Again, Chris Champ talked about how he was motivated earlier tonight. Dr. Ice and the Eclipse became the brand new CW Tag Team Champions, bringing the gold to Nexus Gold, folks. Chris Champ making a tag to Rodriguez. And Rodriguez now on the top rope. Lamar Goldman on the floor. Rodriguez with a double foot stomp to the floor. Taking out Lamar Goldman here. Yeah, yeah, a lot of high octane action from Hector Rodriguez, folks. You have to roll the odds. Rod Rodriguez. He's got Lamar Goldman now and sends him to the buckle. And Hector, oh, no, 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 no. Hector went in for that double knee and his knee went right into the buckle. The knee that Marcus Eagle has been attacking since SummerSlam, folks. And has taken, Mar has taken Hector Rodriguez out of action multiple times. And that was a bad break there for Rodriguez. And now look at this. Marcus Eagle not wasting any time. Going right after that bad leg. That's all braced up. And Marcus telling Hector that I have your number. I have your number. Marcus does. He has taken out Rodriguez. But when it comes to in the, between the ropes, between the bell, he cannot beat Hector Rodriguez. He cannot put him down for a one, two, three. As Rodriguez sprouts oh no! I thought he was gonna springboard there, but gets caught with a power bomb and is turned inside out. Now Lamar Goldman, I'll kick right to the leg there. They got a game plan and they're exploiting it and there's the Samoan drop. And Goldman now with a four right to the face of Rodriguez, two and kick out there. And you have to wonder, is the generation of scum going to become a faction at some point? Is there going to be more members of the generation of scum? There's Marcus Eagle and Lamar Goldman working well together. But hang on a second, Rodriguez fights back there. And Rodriguez trying to bounce to the turnbuckle. He's going to watch out for that knee. Chris Chap down and out. Oh, Rodriguez thrown off. But like I said... Marcus and Lamar are working well together and there's the California dream from the California Prince and now look at that Goldman knocking Chris Chap off the apron again and Rodriguez is in trouble now wait wait a minute wait a minute Rodriguez trying to fight out here and he does Rodriguez is able to escape but again that knee is in bad shape Marcus with that block shot it's going to slow down head to Rodriguez is that knee and now look at this, oh man. Suplex into the net breaker. Beautiful move there by Marcus, but now at the time, and in comes Chris Chap. And Marcus doesn't realize that a close eye to Chris Chap. And Chris Chap now goes straight to Lamar Goldman, and Chap now slamming Lamar Goldman to the mat. And now went for the kick, and he saw it lies in the back of his head. Chris Chap now sending Marcus Eagle to the ropes, and now there's a spy buster. A spine buster by Chris Chap as Marcus has to roll to the outside of the ring to save himself. And Chris Chap now, don't ask how to take it down, Eagle. And now spine buster on the floor there, and immediately Marcus Eagle holds the back of his head. Chris Chap on fire here tonight now. And now hooking the leg here on Marcus Eagle for the cover. Two. And oh, Marcus Eagle gets the shoulder up. A large capacity crowd here for the buy-in show. Chris Chap running into Marcus, but Marcus with his feet up. And oh, look at the athleticism there. Chris Chap with a leap frog. Chris Chap with a leap frog. And now has Marcus.
Rock is up. Oh, there's a suplex slam there. Chris Champ is ready, folks. I'm telling you. Forget what Marcus Eagle says. That boy is ready for the world title. And LeBron Lowe coming after him and getting caught with a headbutt. And now Chris Chap fires back here on Lamar Golden, but Golden fires back with an elbow to Chris Chap. And a spy buster of his own by Lamar Golden. And oh, wait a minute. Lamar Golden to go for the Goldstone elbow. Goldstone elbow on Chris Chap. He hit all of it right on the heart of Chris Chap. Two. And Chris Chap gets the shoulder up, though. What a tag team match this is with the future of MPWF War, ladies and gentlemen. It is Chris Champ and Hector Rodriguez versus Lamar Goldman and Marcus Eagle. And Chris Champ moved out the way and fires back with an elbow to Lamar Goldman and Champ with a boot right to the face of Lamar. And Champ now going to the top rope. He might be too damn big for that. Waiting for Lamar Goldman to get to his feet. Lamar Goldman trying to crawl anywhere he can to escape from Chris Champ. And Lamar in trouble. Get up! Oh, Chris Chap went for the diving clothesline, but he was up there too long. Oh, went for the double axe handle. Chris Chap saw it coming, though. And now Chap sent him into the bucket. And now makes a tag. And in comes Rodriguez once again. And now face first into Rodriguez's boots. And Rodriguez taking a cheap shot there at Marcus Eagle. And I want a standing drop kick there by Hector. And I went Rodriguez, and he dives on top of Marcus Eagle. And Lamar Goldman rolls the outside, and Rodriguez now, and a DDT there. And Rodriguez going again, wheel for a DDT, and him on his open whip free ish, saying, You can have a DDT, you can have a DDT, you can have a DDT. Rodriguez beating these guys first in those epic, and he has it up here now, going for the 6 1 9. Shouting out, find me, dive me, 6 4, dive me! And Rodriguez now with a springboard here. Springboard! God, he's flashing! This could be it! On the North American champion with the cover here! Two! Oh, Lamar Goldman just gets the shoulder up here, and this matchup will continue, folks. These, three, these four men put out all the stops here on the buying show. I said this one was going to be special, and Rodriguez with a double foot spot, and he hits it! And now Rodriguez wants maybe the brain buster. Or maybe we can see the 630. Oh wait, Lamar Goldman though reverses him. And now right back to the Samoan drop. And now the tag and in comes Marcus Eagle once again. And a shot there by Eagle to Hector Rodriguez. Yep. Oh, what a super kick that was. What a super kick by Marcus Eagle with the cover of Rodriguez too. And Rodriguez gets the shoulder up. That was a well-timed, well-placed kick there by Marcus Eagle. And now Eagle with the reverse. Oh, Rodriguez trying to fight back with the clothesline. Not seeing it here. Oh my God. Turning him inside out did Marcus Eagle. And Rodriguez trying to fight back here. Trying to fight back. And now wait a minute. Going up for a power bomb here. And now wait. Oh, reversal. Reversal by Rodriguez. What a cover. Two. No, oh, reversal. Wait a minute. One. Two. Oh, my. Back and forth reversals by these two men here. And now. No. Oh, Rodriguez reversed that one. And Rodriguez now has Marcus Eagle and sends it back to his corner. And now makes the tag. And in comes Chris Chan once again. And now Chris Chap with a, oh my god, a flipping net breaker. And a kick to the back end now Chris Chap Sending Lamar Goldman to the outside. But again, the ring awareness, the in-ring IQ of Marcus Siegel at his young age already is uncanny, folks. Drawing Chris Chap to the outside of the ring to play it dirty where he wants it. And hang on a minute, as he hits the Styles Clash on the floor. The Styles Clash on the floor by Marcus Eagle. And now throwing it back inside the ring does Marcus Eagle. Now Marcus Eagle reveling in it from this crowd here. We're going to shake Marcus Eagles in. Even leaner than before. You can see his calisthenics workouts working out perfectly. But just like that. Pop up power, brother. Goldberg breaks it up. Oh, Chris Chap 
One of his big time finishing maneuvers almost won that matchup there. But if he hits the pounce, that will be it. Bertha May will be singing tonight. You know, Nox Rodriguez off the apron does Marcus Eagle. And now wait, Marcus try to get him there with a double leg takedown. But a sprawl and an elbow there by Chris Champ. And Chris Champ now sending Eagle to the buckle. And now wait a minute. Marcus Eagle's in trouble. Marcus Eagle's in trouble because here comes the pounce. Pounce. Chris Champ with the pounce. And now that's the mark over off the apron. And that's it, folks. Chris Champ now with the cover of Marcus Eagle. One, two. Oh my God, Marcus Eagle got the ropes. Marcus Eagle got the rope break. And like I said, folks, the in-ring IQ of Marcus Eagle. Spectacular as a Spanish play out of nowhere. Spanish play out of nowhere by Marcus Eagle with a second win. And Eagle now catch Rodriguez up top, but he misses the frog splash. He misses the frog splash. What a matchup this is here at the Bayern Show. And Rodriguez now got him up here and go for the 6-1-9. Eagle in trouble, Rodriguez for the second time, 6-4-9. And now wait a minute, Rodriguez now on doing the turn for the place. Oh my god, what an elbow that was by Lamar Goldberg. Lamar Goldberg with an elbow knocking Rodriguez off the apron. And Rodriguez now taking Lamar Goldberg out on the outside of the ring. Rodriguez not focused on him. And now Marcus Eagle here. Oh wait, Marcus blocks the shot. Kick to the midsection. And now wait a minute, Marcus going for the bloodline. And the bloodline by Marcus Eagle. Unable to make the cover there. And there's the cover for the bloodline here by Eagle, but Chris Jack breaks it up. My God, this is back and forth. Back and forth, what a tag team matchup this is. And Eagle now with a drop kick knocking Chris Chap off the apron. And now Marcus Eagle. Get it in the face of Chris Chap. Rodriguez now with the crucifix cover here to Marcus Eagle. Two. <laughs> Rodriguez got him and it's still intact. Marcus Eagle cannot beat Hector Rodriguez. Marcus Eagle cannot beat Hector Rodriguez. That has to be killing him, folks. What a matchup that was. What a matchup that was. And Rodriguez with his biggest hater energy. I might not be able to get to where I want to in my career, but you can't because you cannot beat me. And he proved it again here tonight, folks. What a matchup. Again, round of course, all four of those men, they went out here tonight. But right now, we are going to go through all the matches. They're going to take place at the Royal Rumble, folks. As you see here, the tag team titles are on the line, the finals, the best of five series. It will be the Young Ones versus the Commonwealth for the vacant MPWF World Tag Team Championships. As well as we mentioned, Lethal Mathematics will defend the YouTube title against core wrestling legend Jamie Emo and the self-proclaimed best in the world, C.J. Parker, folks. As well as the MPWF World Heavyweight Championship will be on the line. The unwanted shadow Helios Christ challenges Max Payne, the real Max Payne, for the MPWF World Heavyweight Championship. And how about this one? A tables, ladders, and chairs matchup. Who will be the undisputed CAW World Champion? Will it be Kivo or will it be the Angel Blade, the picture perfect player, the GOAT, Sean Stevens? We will find out. It's going to be a crazy match, folks. And then again, 20 women will compete in the Royal Rumble matchup with the winner becoming the undisputed women's world champion, Justice Fitzgerald, has, is being forced to defend her title on the line in the Royal Rumble matchup. And ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, the 30-man Royal Rumble matchup, the main event, the Big Kahuna spot. The winner of the matchup will main event WrestleMania, and they can challenge for either the MPW World Heavyweight title or the CAW World Heavyweight Championship. All of this and more at the Royal Rumble. We are backstage with Zeus before our main event here tonight at the Bryan Show. Harry Prince said Zeus earlier tonight. I spoke to Shane Carter and he fully believes that his destiny will come true tonight. He believes he will win the 2024 Royal Rumble match and he believes he will beat you. What do you have to say about this?
Zhu says, destiny is arrogance. Of course, this is what Shane Carter would claim. He has yet to understand that his problem solver is not at his side. And he has a big problem in the way of his destiny. And that is me. Cliche or not, my time is coming. The Royal Rumble, the World Championship. It's high time I became a god in the MPWF. I will laugh in each and everyone's face tonight after I pin your fake hero Shane Carter tonight. One, two, three. Well, folks, coming up next is the main event, Shane Carter versus Zeus. There he is, folks. Listen to this ovation. Listen to this ovation, folks. The legend killer Shane Carter with nothing but retribution on his mind. With destiny in the forecast. Shane Carter claims it's his destiny to win the Royal Rumble. But before he proves his destiny, he needs to deal with his former problem solver, Zeus. And that is going to happen right here, right now, in the main event, folks. Again, I'm happy you guys are here with us at the buy-in show. I hope you're enjoying it. I also hope, folks, that you are hyped up for the Royal Rumble just like I am. Again, this is a preview of what we're going to be seeing at the Royal Rumble. Trust me, the Royal Rumble is going to be insane, folks. You're going to sit there, you're going to be like, I didn't know the Emperor would have to get to this level. That's what's going to be happening when the Royal Rumble is done. I promise you that. Dramatic generational response here for Shane Carter tonight. So Zeus has cost this man the North American title. Zeus cost this man the CNW World Championship in the tournament. Shane Carter needs to deal with Zeus here tonight. There he is, folks, with some super ominous music there. Formerly the problem solver. He wants to be known as a god, ladies and gentlemen, Zeus. But wait a minute, Shane Carter ain't wasted time. Shane Carter ain't wasted time. He's going right after him here, folks. Shane Carter has been waiting for months to get his hands in a one-on-one -on -one match with Zeus, and he's going after him here. And Zeus now, firing back here at Shane Carter. Zeus says he is going to laugh in everyone's face when he pins Shane Carter. We'll have to see if that happens here tonight. But it ain't going to be easy for Zeus or Carter. This is going to be a war here. The bell hasn't even sounded. These two men haven't even got in the ring yet. And Carter now throwing Zeus right to the steel ring steps. And now, wait a minute, Shane Carter now going to the top rope here. Waiting for Zeus to get to his feet. And Carter now double axe handle off the top rope. Shane Carter bringing the fight to Zeus here. And now throwing him inside the ring. And now the bell has sounded for our main event of the Royal Rumble buy-in show. As Zeus is in trouble. As he's reeling from these jabs here by Shane Carter. And oh, Carter with that double axe handle. Zeus saw it coming though, an elbow to the midsection. Zeus deceptively fast for his side. Side so. Zeus saying to everyone that his time is coming. It's high time that he is a main eventer here in the MPWF. It's high time that he becomes the world heavyweight champion. Look at that here. And now look at the strength of Zeus. Shane Carter ain't no small man. Shane Carter, 275 pounds of lean muscle, folks. 
on a 15% body fat for Shane Carter at 275 pounds. That's a bad, bad man, folks. But Zeus did just pick him up earlier, but Carter now hanging Zeus up in the ropes. And Carter now on the second rope here. And now Shane Carter, oh man. I don't know what Carter was going for there, but it did not work. And look at that. Heavy hands by the big man Zeus. And Zeus now has Carter on the ropes. Now what is Zeus going for here? Shane Carter in trouble now. Oh man! Oh man! Zeus happy about that one. Zeus is happy about that one. And oh no, not again. Not again here. Zeus down a power bomb to the floor. Oh man. Zeus is trying to cripple Shane Carter before the World Rumble matchup. Now you're doing the announce table here. Our German team having to squirm away. As there's a fall away, Simon to the announce table. Zeus says he is going to ruin Shane Carter's destiny. And he try he doing his best job at that. Now look at that big knee to the back, and that's one big ass knee to the back there with that chin lock. Reverse chin lock, I should say. Now, oh, the knee to the face there. And again, it's all sweet that Shane Carter wants to get his retribution on Zeus. But Zeus, six foot ten, almost 400 pounds. That ain't easy, folks. A kick out there by Shane Carter, though. He ain't going to give up here tonight. This crowd here booing the hell out of Zeus. Elbow there by Zeus to Shane Carter. And now into the buckle. And now Zeus, what's he going for here? No, knees to the midsection. Zeus is just like, I'm going to punish this man. I'm going to just punish this man. And that's what he's doing here. And then when the time comes, he's going to look for the end of days. And embarrass Shane Carter here at the buying show. But listen to this crowd. They are ragging on this boy Zeus right now. And Carter is, is crawling for some help here. But Carter though, fights back with the shot. And now Carter again catching Zeus. And now Carter back to the top rope here. And Carter off the top rope with a drop kick and he hits it. Missile drop kick off the top rope by the legend killer. And a clothesline there by Carter. And another clothesline and dropping Zeus. And ducks that one. Carter with extra momentum and three clotheslines. Carter now on the second rope. Measuring, waiting for Zeus to get to his feet. Shane Carter, blockbuster. Blockbuster by Shane Carter. And a hook in the leg on the big man. Here in the main event with the cover. Two. And oh, Zeus gets the shoulder up. And now. Look at that body shot there by Shane Carter. Right back to that dirty box in here with Zeus. Right to the midsection every single time. No wasted motion by the legend killer. And now what's he going for here? Now he's going to choke out Zeus into the ropes. Shane Carter has no problem bending the rules. All that has happened is the crowd has started Shane Carter. Has started cheering Shane Carter. He has changed nothing in his repertoire. And he won't. Not against Zeus. And now oh, back into the ropes again. And now Carter heading to the top rope. Zeus on the floor. Zeus is down. What is he going for here? What is he going for here? And now drop kick to the floor there by Shane Carter. And now Carter on top of the announce table. And now Shane Carter with the splash off the table on top of Zeus. Carter bringing the pain MPWF style to Zeus here in the main event. And now Shane Carter throwing Zeus back inside the ring here. If Shane Carter can hit that pile driver. He might have it. He might have it. Now what's he going for here? What is this? What is this? Oh my goodness! Shane Carter bringing in real grabs to this wrestling matchup. He bringing in real grabs to this wrestling matchup. He said, you were talking about King's Road style. I'm going to drop this boy right on the back of his head. And now look at this. After dropping him on his head, the sleeper hold. The sleeper hold in Zeus is fading. 
He's faded. This crowd here completely on Shea Carter's side. As Zeus the Oh, man, jawbreaker. A jawbreaker with a mountain sized head. And I'll call it trying to fight back here against Zeus. And I'll Zeus moving out the way. And, oh, what a clothesline. What a clothesline by Zeus. And now a kick to the knee and another clothesline. And now Zeus ducking under Shane Carter's clothesline. A backdrop. And this is not looking good for the Legend Killer. Wait a minute. Shane reversed it and there's a face buster. Shane Carter reversed Zeus. Shane Carter looking for the power driver perhaps. Looking for the power driver, perhaps. And he's got him up here. Pile driver, and he hit it. Shay Carter hit the pile driver. And who hit the leg? But oh, the referee signaling for the rope break. Zeus's leg was under the rope. You can see it there. The benefits of being 6'10. The benefits of being really, really tall, folks. And now, wait a minute. Oh, net slam there by Shane Carter. And Zeus rolling to the floor. And Carter goes right after him. Carter wants to pin Zeus tonight. Carter don't want to win this match up by count out. He wants to pin Zeus before the Royal Rumble match. And now wait a minute. Zeus has Carter up on the outside. It is. Oh my God. Running body slam there on the floor. On that thinly padded mat. And Zeus slowing down that momentum right the way down. Zeus now throwing Shane Carter back inside the ring. The big man now getting over the top there, breaking up the five count. And Zeus is in trouble. Sorry, Shane Carter's not in trouble, I should say. Zeus is exactly where he wants to be. Now look at this here, just stomping at the foot of Shane Carter. Now what's he going for here? And now look at that. Oh, man. Slamming him to the mat like he's a sack of potatoes. Oh, look, Shane Carter sucking him in. Shane Carter sucking him in. And now Shane Carter going for the inside cradle. Some call a small package as he goes for the cover. And I'll kick out there, though. No, missed that shot to Shane Carter. And now the big man sees, oh my goodness. What a blow that was. His fists are like weapons. His fists are like steel chair shots. Oh, Shane Carter still fighting though. Shane Carter not giving up here tonight. And Carter now sending Zeus into the buckle. And now all sent Zeus all the way to the floor. Shane Carter sending Zeus all the way to the floor. And oh, Carter, oh my god! Oh, Carter in the building! Shane Carter said my favorite was this Kurt Angle! That man just did a moonsault to the outside of the floor! Kurt Carter running right here tonight, ladies and gentlemen! And Shane Carter now, we're gonna finish this one off here! And Shane Carter now! Has Zeus up! I'm gonna drop him on the top of his head again! Shane Carter now needs to finish this off and go for the up 5 4. That moves up to the floor was crazy! Was crazy! And now Shane Carter gonna go for the up 5 4. No, wait a minute, Zeus getting to his feet. Shane Carter better taking too much time. Shane Carter diving out of the ball. Zeus catches him with the slap! Zeus catching him in mid air with the slam. And now Zeus not going for the end of days. Oh my god, the end of days to Shane Carter. And the end of days to. Oh man. Oh man, folks. Shane Carter might have taken too much time to go for the 0 5 4. And Zeus has just pinned Shane Carter in the middle of the ring. One, two, three at the buy-in show. My God, folks, we might be looking at the winner of the Royal Rumble right here.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dwayne James Johnny Fieldkin, and I am signing out from the War Rumble Buying Show. We will see you live for the Royal Rumble. Good night, folks.